Hello and welcome to the Gear for Music studio. I'm Clark and I'm here to unbox and set up Gear for Music's BDK1 full size starter drum kit. So, as you can see, this entire kit comes complete in one box. If you're new to drumming, this kit is a fantastic place to start. So, let's jump in and see what's inside. We've got stools, a H for various stands. S could be a snare stand, but we'll find that out very shortly. That could be a pedal. And then stacked inside, we've got all the drums, one inside the other. This is the hardware for the toms, so we'll need those. All the important hardware. And the final one for now. Okay, so in these boxes, we should have all the lugs that we need to connect the drums and the drum skins together. What we need to find is a drum key so that we can put it all together. Okay, so I've got a drum key. What we need to do now is take off the connecting drum lugs so we can take off all the packaging. Now they put plenty of packaging around here so it doesn't scratch. So now we'll just take everything out of the boxes and the bags so we can make sure that we've got everything that we need and it makes it a lot easier for setting up the drum kit. So that's everything unpacked and ready to go. I have here a set of instructions that are available on the product page on the Gear for Music website. So let's set it up. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is the bass drum. Okay, so if we turn it so that we have the, uh, the tom bracket facing upwards and we've got the sticker on the top as well, so that gives us a clue that we're putting it the right way up. You should have the legs uh, brackets here as well so that we can stick the legs into there to give it that support that we need. So what we've got to start off with is getting the two bass drum skins. Obviously the Gear for Music one is going to go on the front. So to do this what we've got to try and do is line up the Gear for Music logo so that when it, it goes face down uh, that should be straight across the top there. Okay, so starting with the, the front skin, what we've got to try and do is match the Gear for Music logo in line with the top of this bracket here, where the, the toms are going to fit in. That means it's just straight and uh, it looks a lot neater. Next, we've got to get the hoop and put that flat onto the drum skin. So to make sure that we can get this into place, I need the lugs and the claws and they're going to sit over the top of the hoop and it's going to pull the drum skin down. So let's start with the claws and the lugs, which have got washers on there as well. What I'm going to do is just dip the end of the lug into the grease that's there. Just so that that goes in a lot easier. Then if we take the claw hook that over the edge of the hoop and we drop the lug in. Now what I'm going to do just to start off with is just screw that in loosely just just so I can feel that attach to this part of the the drum kit here. Then just repeat the process all the way around the drum. Okay so now we've got all those into place what I'm going to do now is actually finger tighten all of the lugs just so they go as far as I can get them to go. Now let's do the other side. Okay, so once again I'm just going to finger tighten all of the lugs just to make sure that they're as tight as I can get them uh, before tuning. Now with the bass drum what I'd actually recommend is putting a pillow inside because it's such a big drum compared to the other ones um, a lot of the sound will resonate. So to prevent it being really boomy and echoey, if you put a pillow or something inside it, it'll make it much of, uh, a much more deader sound. It'll sound a lot more like a, a solid bass drum. Okay, so time to tune the three toms. So this is the large one, this is the floor tom, or the low tom. And what we've got to make sure that we do here is get the Gear for Music sticker facing the right way up. Now what I'm gonna do first is the batter head, which is the one that we get on the top. 
These are the two skins that we'll get for the toms. The batter head will have the logo on the top as well. The resonant head, which goes on the bottom, is plain. The difference between these hoops and the bass drum hoops are that these have actually got little holes for the lugs to go. So we don't have to get additional brackets to fit on the top. So all I have to do is line up the holes in the hoops with the holes in the attached lug holes there. Once I've got them in place, I can get the smaller lugs, smaller rods, and they can go inside the holes. So in fact, what I'd actually suggest for the toms is that you start to put the, the lug rods in opposites. This is just gonna help pull the skin evenly around the drum. If we start to do it all the way around, it's gonna pull the skin all the way around on one side and it's gonna be much harder to get an even sound across the drum. So as you can see, I've started down here. So my next option is to put this one up here. Work in a clockwise direction. I'll go back to the original one and come back and use this one here. Opposite to this one, I can then come across here and go straight to this lug here. As with the bass drum, make sure that you can finger tighten all of the lugs and that just gives us a rough, even tune to, to start off with. I'll do the same for the batter head and the resonant head on all of the drums and then we can give it uh, a good tune and try and get everything sounding as good as we can. Now when you do reskin for the first time, new drums are usually pretty good, but it's worth getting rid of any kind of dust or any loose pieces just uh, when you put the new skin on, just so you don't get anything rattling around in the drum or, or tearing the drum skin. That's really important when you're playing. So just make sure that it's free from dust and then put the drum skin on top. Okay, so now let's look at all the additional bits that come with the kit, uh, the hardware, the stool, and the stands. So let's take a look at the stool first. So the stool comes in three pieces. We've got the legs, we've got the height arm that sits in the top, and then, of course, we've got the seat that goes on the top of that as well. So let's put that together. Make sure that any of the additional screw bits are tight so that when we sit on it, it doesn't fall apart. What you'll see in this uh, height arm are five holes. And that just means that we can set the height at a comfortable position for when we're playing the drums. To attach this, you get the bolt, put it through one of the holes, and it will sit comfortably into that little gap there. Turn that round, we'll put the washer and the nut back on the top, and that will secure everything into place. So now the stool is together, and we can sit on that quite comfortably. Okay, so we've got two legs, and these are gonna to attach to the bass drum to stop this rocking back and forth. So you'll see these silver brackets on the side of the bass drum, and what you want to do is take the short arm of the leg, tighten that up. That should give us the support we need, and now that's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, we've got two of these, and the, these are the arm brackets that we're gonna attach into the bass drum so that we can put the two toms on top of that. You'll hear that slot into place, so we can tighten that up there, and that's in position for one tom, and that one will stay in place for the other tom. Now every drummer has their own way of setting the kit up, so to change the angle of the toms, you can twist this and make that go up and down, so you can have the tom higher up on the kit, or you can have it lower down. I'm gonna set it about halfway. Drums come in a large variety of sizes and configurations. And as your skills progress, you'll find out what size and setup suits you. But this BDK is your classic rock setup. The heights and angles of your drums are largely personal preference. So start playing and tweak accordingly. Okay, so let's mount the toms. I'm gonna to take the smaller tom first and I'm gonna attach that onto the arm, letting that go into there. 
And then we tighten that back up so that it's set at where we want it to be. Then take the middle tom and do the same. Now what we might find is that they do catch where they're set. So what you might need to do is take the drum key and just move that at the bottom and that allows it just to move round so that we don't catch each tom. Okay, so let's take a look at setting up the floor tom. So we've got these three legs and these are all gonna go into the floor tom brackets. So that's all set. Okay, so now let's have a look at setting up the cymbal and the cymbal stand. So first of all, if we take this stand, it's got some adjustable points. Okay, so first of all, if we do the bottom one, that's going to open the, the three legs for the stand. And we can place that into position. If we go a little bit higher up the stand, we can move the, the, the bar up and tighten that off as well. You've got one more a little bit further up. You can tighten that there. And finally, we've got this one here, which is going to move this adjustable bar, which sets the angle of the symbol that we're going to want. So if I turn this towards me, then it's set at an angle which is suitable for playing. And I can tighten that up. Okay, so now that's in place. If I adjust this, and take this off there. You'll see that there's a washer and two felts as well. If we take one of the felts and put that down, that means we can take the symbol, place that on the top, and then we take the next felt and put that down over the top as well. And that just protects the, uh, the middle of the symbol from getting any damage. Put the washer on and then the wing nut back over the top and that secures the cymbal in place. Okay, so let's take a look at setting up the snare drum and the stand for that as well. So the snare drum stand comes in two parts, very similar to the cymbal stand. So you've got the lower part with the legs, and if we can set them into place, we can get that set up straight away. For the bit on top, we've got this bar and three arms that come out. Now the snare drum is gonna sit on top of here. So what we need to do is just adjust this to tighten that up and then that can slot into the lower part of the snare stand. Now these three arms are set to move so we need to get the snare drum sitting on the inside of each of those arms. What you can do then is you push them in and that will make sure that the snare drum is tight and it's not going to fall off. Okay, so let's put that out of the way for the time being while I set the hi-hat up. So as I explained earlier, we've got a set of hi-hats and we've got a stand in two or three parts. Let's look at the bass part. Again, just like the cymbal stand and the snare stand, we can tighten that up with the three legs. The difference with this one is that we've got a pedal, which is going to operate the open and close part of the hi-hat. To attach this, we squeeze these together and they just slot into the holes at the bottom of the stand. Now that's in there secure. Place that onto the floor and push the legs down so that they are flat against the floor. Tighten that up and take the second piece. Now this is loose. We've got the top bar which is going to rest the hi-hats on top of and we've got the rod that's going to operate the open and close function. On top of here we've got the hi-hat clutch which we can take off and the hi-hats are going to fit inside of this. So if we put the rod inside here, you'll find a screw and if you just tighten that up into there, it makes it a lot easier to do that first than before, before putting this on. After that, we can slot that over the top and adjust that to the height that we want the hi-hat to be at. If we tighten that up there, again, that's all in place. The next thing to do is to take one of the hi-hat symbols and unscrew the clutch. If we separate the two felts that are there, they'll come apart like that. Take one of the hi-hat symbols and just thread the clutch through the hole in the hi-hat. Then we can put the felt back on and the little bolt that secures that underneath and tighten that up. So that's stuck onto there now. If we take the second hi-hat, rest that on the top of there, place the first one over the top, tighten that up and the hi-hat's ready. Okay, so finally what we've got is the bass drum pedal. Now this comes in two parts, we've got the beta 
and the pedal part as well. What we've got to do to attach these is take the drum key and open up that screw there. That allows us to put the beater through the hole and set it to a point that we want it to be at. Then we can tighten that up and that is ready and secure in place. Now before I actually put that on, we've got this. And this is going to go onto the bottom of the bass drum where we're going to attach the pedal. Because we don't want to scratch the hoop bass drum pedal, this is actually going to sit at the bottom so when the teeth of the bass drum pedal sits on there, it secures in place and it doesn't scratch. So I'm going to do that now. So there we go, I've attached the bass drum and that's it, that's the full kit all set up and ready to go. Now all you need to do is adjust any of the angles, the heights and the tuning to suit your own preference. And there you have it, you're ready to play. To learn more about the BDK-1 and Gear for Music's other exclusive drum kits, head over to the Gear for Music website. Thanks for watching and happy drumming.